What is going on everyone? This is Duskfall Gaming, and I am bringing you another bow tutorial for Call of Duty Black Ops 3, and this one is going to be how to upgrade your bow to get the Storm Bow. Um, first of all, first up always is to, of course, get your bow. Uh, that involves feeding the three dragon heads until they turn to stone and break. Um, the next step is where the upgrade starts to happen. And the first step in getting the storm bow is you have to shoot that weather vane. And it should drop your broken reborn arrow. Now, once you have this arrow, it's actually quite an easy process, or for the most part it is. Uh, there is one step that is, or I guess two steps that are basically the same thing, that are very, very difficult. Um, just gonna wait till the path is clear. And what you need to do is, oh, whoops. Uh, if you go over here, in the distance, you'll see a pile of logs. You want to aim about a little ways over the mountain, but it basically looks like that but it's really far away and there's three of them so that's one the other one is over there which i don't think we hit nope i need to be aiming a little bit lower um all right uh right above the tip of the mountain it normally seems to be about where you want yep there we go so there's the second one, and the third one, you're actually going to have to go down into the rocket test area to hit, and I'll see you when we're there. Alright, so, the, um, the other log pile is just up there. You want to aim a little bit higher than you think, because it's a little further away than you think. And then after this comes the third step, and... Well, we'll be right back when we're there. Alright, so next step, you're going to want to do some wall running. And you're going to see a bunch of panels lit up or sort of flashing on the wall like that. And sadly enough, the anti-gravity is about to end. But there's, I believe, five of them that you have to hit. And um, as long as... Or you can't touch the ground. You have to do it all in one sort of circuit. So I'm just gonna wait till anti gravity comes back on. Um, sorry about that. Could have planned that better. <laughs> so yeah, this bow, honestly, I have to say, is probably one of the easiest setups, second to the wolf bow. But it's still second to the fire bow in terms of power and usability. Uh, this this bow... Well, once once I have it, I'll kind of explain my issue with it. It's It's got a certain feature to it that I don't personally like. Uh, come on, Antigrav. Come on, Veil Device. You don't take that long to recharge, do you? I guess you do. But there's one here, which I think, for some reason, was already lit up. Uh, so you get the fail noise there if you touch the ground. So I need the one. Oh no, there's one over there as well. I always forget about that one. Then two. And then three. Come on, I hate the ceiling of this place too. While you're wall running. Four. So there's five of them that you need to hit. And then... No. And then... It'll play that noise. And now what you're going to want to do next is there's three locations around the map that you're going to need to go to with your bow. Or it, the kills don't have to be with the bow, but there's going to be three little pots around the map that look like this. And you're going to have to get six kills around the pot. Now it's going to act like the soul chest did on Origins in Black Ops 2. It's going to act like the, um, the Rings of Fire while upgrading the fire bow, and it's going to act like the um, sort of piles that the dog digs up 
while doing the wolf slash spirit bow. And you kill a zombie and it's going to eat the zombie's soul. Or not eat it, but it's going to consume the zombie's soul. Um, so, yes, there's three of these. There's one here. There's one over there near the uh, Wonder Fizz. Not on the, like, near the death ray, but down on the lower courtyard. Um. Oh, that's unfortunate. Um. Did we get enough? We did. Now, you're gonna want to put your reticle on that and pull your bow back all the way. And then what you're gonna want to do is hit those piles a second time. And you'll see me fail at it a couple of times here because this far away one is just incredibly difficult to hit. Um, especially when there's a lot of zombies around. Um, I'm gonna die. Oh, clutch. <laughs> Unnecessary clutch for a tutorial video. <laughs> oh, crap. And I'm out of ammo. So anyway, if the zombies would just let me do this, um, you're going to want to hit those piles second time, and I think I'm going over, yeah. Um, I normally gauge it with the mountain, but the smoke sort of blocks out the mountain there, so it's difficult to see for this one. Um, just wait for the zombies to clear the path again. Like, Treyarch, why did you have to place it there? That's, like, the worst spot. I've downed so many times while doing this one. Um, right there. Let's hope. We hit it. There we go. Um, you'll be able to tell because it's going to turn into, like, a storm thing with a, some lightning bolts swirling around it. And now your electric pot is going to not be sparking anymore. Now, the next one is over this way. Just down in this room, right above Double Tap. Right there. Um, oh, that Wonder Phase isn't online. Um, I'm quickly going to hop up here and turn on this launch pad. That's over here. Because the Wonder Phase is incredibly, incredibly um, convenient for doing this one. Uh, and I do recommend that you do the uh, far one with the electric pot over there. It doesn't really matter which one you do with which pot, but the far one is much more time-consuming to hit. It's much more difficult to hit, so you're going to want to do the um, closest pot with the furthest or the hardest uh, pile. Because for this one, it's easy to just wonder fizz over there. Or not Wonder Fizz, what am I saying? Wonder Sphere. It's easy to just Wonder Sphere over there and um, pop the uh, arrow into the... Um... Did it work? It worked. Just pop your arrow into the uh, log pile over here, the easiest one to get. There you go. That's the second one done, and we'll come right back when we're at the third one. Alright, so the third one is right here in the uh, rocket um, test pad thing, the sort of chamber, the safe chamber or whatever that you have to go in when the um, test is or test sequence is going off. Um, this one is quite difficult to do with a lot of zombies around you, so just be very, very cautious. Um, especially in situations like this, you do not want to get yourself into a situation like that, because you are definitely going to die. Especially with without Juggernaug, like I am right now. You will die. Um, okay, so that's the electricity. Oh, you dink. Um, see if we can just quickly hit it. We did, and now we're gonna Wonder Sphere out of here. Do not try that at home. <laughs> that was probably the luckiest hit I've ever had in zombies in my life. Um, now that we've got all three of those done, um, I'm pretty sure what we need to do next is we go up here to 
back to the death ray. And you'll notice once all three of those are filled up, the wind vane will be stormy as well, and there will be a cloud sort of at the bottom there. Now you need to shoot the wind vane, or no, you don't need to shoot it. You need to give your broken reborn arrow to that cloud, and then it'll do a thing, and you shoot the wind vane, and the cloud drops out your now fixed reborn arrow. And rinse, repeat like the rest of the other bows. You just bring this down to the uh, anti-gravity chamber or the undercroft or whatever you like to call it. Um, just take it down here, place it in, like there's four little pedestals for each bow. You place it in the pedestal, get 20 kills. It'll absorb the souls from the zombies and you'll have your bow. Or you're going to have to give your bow into the pedestal. Um, so be prepared to go without a bow for about 20 seconds or so. Waiting for a zombie to kill so I can go and grab Jug before I do this. Because this step has... It's killed me before. And it's very, very annoying to get on the very last step. And then to just be completely demolished because you're playing cautiously without jug because you just want all the points to be able to get the bow as fast as you can but believe me that's not the way you want to play it when you're trying to get these bows um it is good to get them on the lowest round possible because if you're doing the easter egg um solo i'm not sure if you have to do all four bows for solo but it's nice to start the easter egg on a really early round because that wisp, wisp step can really screw you um so yeah, you'll notice the bow is sort of glowing with this black smoke. Um, if you don't hear the noise of you completing it or whatever, just the activation noise, or if you don't notice the souls stop going into the pedestal, the black smoke will disappear and you'll be left with like the sort of blue fog aurora. Um, and that's when you know that you're done. Um... There we go. You see, as you can see, it's absorbing the souls from the zombies. Um, and you have to do this at the end of every bow um, upgrading step, just as a uh, final step there. Easy thing for Treyarch to do. These bows are almost upgraded like exactly the same as the stabs from Origins. Um, so it's, yeah, it's just like a series of steps, and then you get a whole bunch of souls into the uh, staff and see it'll have the activation music or the activation sound sort of and oh the black smoke doesn't go away never mind I was lied to um, as you can see you're gonna have to give your bow into the pedestal but in the course of about five seconds you have your storm bow now the one issue that I have with the storm bow while playing on high rounds, while trying to do the easter egg and do the wisp step, and all of that other stuff, I'll demonstrate right here, which I love the firebow for. The firebow solves this problem so much. The zombies are not stopped instantly, which means for about three seconds, they're still hitboxes, which means you can't walk through them. If you are playing and you're going through a doorway, like right here or something, and all of a sudden there's some zombies coming down the stairs, and you shoot and you have your storm, you're going to have to sit here for three seconds before you can run through the zombies. And that can be crucial, and that can be killing if there's a horde of zombies behind you. It could absolutely just demolish you and ruin your day. It has for me many, many times, which is why I recommend getting the fire bow, because as soon as you draw all the way back and hit and get them in the little lava volcanoes, um, or, oh, I'm, I've been saying it's the fire bow, it's the magma bow, I'm sorry. As soon as you get them in those little magma rocks, they are out of hitboxes, you can walk through them, uh, and there's no issue there. That bow and the wolf bow is fairly good for make, getting zombies out of your way too. The wolf bow is basically a thunder gun. Um, but the storm bow is the second strongest bow, in my opinion. It can get you 
Uh, I, I wouldn't say it goes weak until about round 27 or 8. Unlike the fire bow, which will go to round 30 plus, the wolf bow goes to about round 22 before it starts dropping off of its damage threshold. And the void bow... Just don't bother with the void bow, but... If I had to say when it dropped off, I would probably say around round 24 or 5. It's just the kills aren't instant, and for every time you charge it back, I'm pretty sure only 6 or so zombies are killed. Because that bow has, the, like, the skulls uh, that come out and uh, chomp up your zombies from you. And I'm quickly just going to end the round so I can show you how well it does against a panzer. Which is crucial for the bows as well. The storm bow traps the panzer in its little storm thing, I'm pretty sure. Just as the fire bow traps him in the... Uh... Oh, if I don't die, I'll show you what the panzer does. Or what it does to the panzer, sorry. Um, it'll... Um, just like the fire bow, will trap it in the like little magma volcano. Is a... Oh my god, I'm going at the fire bow again. Um, the, with the magma bow, it'll trap it in the big lava rock or whatever, and he won't be able to move. He'll sort of be stunned, and you'll be able to kill him really pretty easily. Um, so, but with the wolf bow, I haven't experienced that. Um, okay, so the storm does not stop the panzer either. But you can kill him in three headshots, which is... Similar to the fire bow. This, this bow is very similar to the fire bow. The only difference really is the aesthetics and the concept that it um, it doesn't kill instantly or it doesn't remove hitboxes instantly. So like, see, I hit that and I can still walk into the zombies. I can't get through until about three seconds later. Whereas if I had the fire bow and I went like that, I would just be able to walk right through the zombies as soon as they're hit with the arrow. Um... As long as it's, or as long as they're in the volcano rock things. Um, but this bow is very effective. It, I have to say it's more effective than the fire bow because it's a long lasting sort of cyclone that you can train zombies through. Whereas the fire bow, it's basically sort of like a wonder waff, or an old wonder waff in the sense that you shoot a place on the ground and it spreads backwards in your horde of zombies um, in its radius. Anyway, that was the tutorial for the Stormbow. I uh, hope you enjoyed. I hope it was helpful. I hope you have a wonderful day. Um, like if you liked the video. Subscribe if you like me. This has been Duskfall Gaming. And I will see you in the next video.